The brickyard ruins at Fertile, Minnesota started me down the path of my Minnesota Bricks enterprise. I had a day off, so I attended the 2010 Polk County Fair in Fertile, then explored the abandoned brickyard nearby. This is a Google Earth image from 2012, which is much like it looked in 2010. The Sand Hill River golf course is just across the road to the south. The Northern Pacific Railroad used to have a line through the fertile area and a spur led to the old brickyard. These are long since gone. There were a couple old power lines through the area, but I was struck by one pole that ended all by itself. There were also remnants of an old kiln, a water tower on the hill, stacks of bricks, a lone pile of clay, and an old table. Just to the north were the old clay beds. Here are a few of my 2010 photographs, starting with the power pole leading to nowhere. Of course, nowhere used to be the old brickyard. This is the old kiln. The water tower. The old clay pits. The kiln again. Looking into the kiln. Iron tracks for old carts. Iron poles for pushing the bricks and carts through the kiln. A lone piece of track. A small building at the side of the kiln. The clay pile. A stack of bricks. The old table. The water tower. and two houses which may have been part of the most recent brickyard. As mentioned before, Fertile is located in Polk County, Minnesota. It is a small town with a rich history. So what made Fertile a good location for a brickyard? Way back in history, most of northwest Minnesota was covered by the glacial lake Eggsy. 
Fertile was right along its shoreline. Various lake heights resulted in several north to south beaches around the fertile area. After the lake drained, the Sand Hill River, which was located just south of Fertile, flowed into the Red River of the North. A bed of delta and modified drift was left around Fertile, ideal for making brick. This topographical map shows Fertile, the Sand Hill River, and the brickyard location, which is at an elevation of about 1,120 feet. The Fertile Brickyard was started in 1897 by George Kronschnabel. The brickyard was located on the southwest edge of town. This 1902 plat map shows the brickyard location with the spur track to the yard. There were three beehive kilns where the bricks were burned to their final hardness. These three kilns appear on this postcard as well as this second postcard. A beehive kiln was a round kiln composed of fire brick. The two postcards also show a large brick smokestack for the three kilns, a wooden water tower, the building where the bricks were made, a tall iron smokestack, which likely powered the brick-making machines, sheds for drying the wet brick, the clay pits, and where the bricks were stacked, to load onto rail cars. The Sims Brick and Tile Company took over the brickyard location in 1919. The yard still had a spur track off the Northern Pacific Railroad, but that was removed around 1930. The final owner of the fertile brickyard location was the Red River Brick Corporation which took over sometime after 1932, when John Sims died. This 1939 aerial photo shows little activity at the yard, so it probably wasn't being used yet. That all changed by 1941, when the Red River Brick Corporation installed new kilns and equipment. This aerial photo showed the new buildings and a larger clay pit. This 1964 plat map showed that the Red River Brick Corporation owned a larger parcel of land than just the original brickyard. By 2003, there were only a few remnants of that once flourishing 1954 brickyard. I returned to the fertile brickyard in the fall of 2022 and noticed more changes at the site. The grounds are being straightened up and all the remnants of the old buildings were gone, even the two houses that were there on my first visit in 2010. I brought my video camera along to record those changes.
Although the brickyard is now gone, the site has become a recreation area. That concludes the video. Make sure to check out my other YouTube videos and my primary website at mnbricks.com.